Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Tyler here. Welcome back to the Electron and Svelte tutorial series. Today, in episode 2, we're going to be dealing with Electron preload scripts and how to use them inside of Electron. So, let's dive right into it. The first thing first, we have to define what a preload script is. And that's actually pretty simple. The browser window, when we're loading content into the URL or the page, we have the ability to pass in a JavaScript file or otherwise known as a preload script into the content. So what will happen is when we're loading into the browser window, we can pass in a JavaScript file before any of the DOM content or other JavaScript files are ran. So why is this useful? Well, basically the preload script has access to the DOM and Node.js runtimes at the same time. What that means is, is we can expose specific content, functions, methods, and variables into the renderer process that otherwise would be impossible to do without using something like node integration. So uh, let's just dive on into the code and get started with this since I'm sure you're interested to see what I mean. Okay, so I am here in my text editor of choice and pretty much the file structure has not changed since our last episode. So let's now go into our electron folder and create a new file called preload.js. So inside of this file, this is going to be that script we run inside the browser. So first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is import a few things. We are going to import the um, context bridge from electron. So if you're using TypeScript, you just do you know import context bridge from Electron. If you're using normal JavaScript, you're just gonna destructure it like this. Then, now that we have this context bridge, it's actually quite simple. First, we're gonna have to declare some sort of API. I'm gonna call it API, and it's just an object containing functions and values. And then, we're gonna use this context bridge value. So we're gonna do context bridge dot expose in main world. And it's the only function it has available to it. And the first parameter is going to be the API key, which is a string. I'm going to call it API. And the second parameter is the actual object we want to pass in. So in this case, it is the object we just created up here. So that is actually it. Inside of elect or, uh, our render process, to actually get access to this object, we would simply have to do window dot and then lowercase API. The reason it's lowercase API is because that's what we called it here. If we called this hello, then to get access to whatever's inside this object, we would have to do window.hello. So we obviously uh, do that right there. And there we go. So I'm gonna go back and call this API. Now this, you may be like, okay, so we get access to this object. Why is that useful? Well, because inside this object, what we can do is um, use Node.js. So inside this file, I can bring in things like the platform, the CPUs, and let's just say total mem. And we can bring these in from the OS module. So OS is a Node.js specific module. So we shouldn't be able to write this code if we have access to it in the DOM, but we will be able to. What we can do is we can say CPUs is equal to CPUs, and I'm just gonna call it. We can say get memory and pass in the total mem function. And what this will do, right, is it'll allow us to actually get access to these functions and values inside of our renderer process, which is something we wouldn't be able to do without um, node integration enabled. So now that we have this preload.js script, figured out and configured, how do we actually load this into our page? Well, going back to the index.js file, all we have to do is inside of our browser window constructor, we can go down here below show and do web preferences and then open up an object and pass in preload and then the path to our script. So I'm gonna use the join method, pass in the directory name. So this is gonna get our current directory and then I'm gonna do dot slash to go to preload.js, preload.js. 
And just like that, what'll happen is when we load up our page, it'll actually load this preload.js file. So let us go into the terminal and test this out. First thing I'm gonna do before we actually run this though, is I'm gonna go into the app.svelte component over here. And in the script section up top, I'm just gonna console.log the window dot API. And again, the reason we're doing window.api is because inside of our preload script, we named our API, well, API. So if this was named anything else, we would have to do window dots, whatever else we named it. So let us go into the terminal and do npm run dev, and that will compile our Svelte side and run the Electron code. So if we hit control shift I to open up the developer tools, what you'll see is we get an object. And you can see it's console.logging this on app.svelte line four, which is right here. So this object is gonna contain our API. So what you see is we have access to the CPUs. You can see I'm running an AMD Ryzen 5, uh, my speed in gigahertz, 3.39 gigahertz, as well as the actual CPU times. And we can also see this get memory function. For example, if I do API dot get memory and then call it, you can see this is how many gigabytes of RAM I have because the get memory function returns um, this in bytes. Now, let's quickly go over what this is and why this is super useful. Typically, if I were to type in here like require, like say I wanna get the OS module, right? And then I want to call. So say I want to, you know, get the OS module. I want to do the same thing I did up there. I can do const OS is equal to require OS. And what you'll see is when I hit enter, require is not defined. And that's a good thing. We don't want it to be defined in this process. However, in the preload script, since we really want to use this OS object, all we have to do is require it in here, and we can get access to the window through context bridge. So this is really useful. It allows us to declare uh, functions as well as variables and things like that that have access to the node um, runtime. So we can import other things. We can do like const, um, or we can, you know, we, we have access to anything from Electron, Node.js, any other third-party dependencies, but we don't have to use node integration and expose the user to tons of security vulnerabilities by allowing require to just work like that. So if you found this video useful, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.